morning everybody clinton here oval window racing um we're back here in the garage and uh we're gonna continue with grease pit um it's finally time to like seal the uh seal them up um start putting them together and i know it's been a while but uh you know been a pretty busy summer but uh first thing uh we're gonna do is just basically put the short block together and that's just the case halves with all the internals in there um, but the first thing i want to do is uh kind of go through a little uh a little uh, check um, you want to make sure you have everything in here because <laughs> once it's together you don't want to have to take it apart because then you got to clean up all the silicone and and sealing again but uh first thing uh, I always like to do is basically roll the engine around until you uh, get your, your your cam marks together and we can see those right there I actually went and uh, painted them with a purple marker um, just so you can see them but there's a dot there's a dot on the camshaft and their uh, gear the camshaft gear and then there's one on the crank gear um, you just got to make sure that they're running together and that they're inside one another just like that then what we're going to do is uh, as you can see I'm missing the uh, cam plug but that's over here I'll show you a cam plug Here's cam plug. And you can see with the cam plug, it's a flat on one side and hollow on the inside. Um, there's a couple different ways of putting this in here. You can put it with the hollow side towards the cam, or you can put the flat side towards the cam. Now, uh, through the years, uh, there's always been a discussion of which way it's supposed to go. You can do it either way. Some say that the factory uh, um, put it one way, like with the flat side out. I'm dyslexic, so I could be getting this backwards. But that flat side out meant auto stick engine. And if they put the hollow side out, that meant standard shift engine. I don't know if that's true or not. That's just some of the stuff I heard in the past. Um, but what I usually like to do as I'm doing this is uh, I'll put a little bit of silicone inside here. And I've always kind of used the red silicone, but I think today I'm just going to use the black silicone. Uh, it doesn't hurt to try different things. Um, I've never really had one that was leaky using the orange silicone, but um, it doesn't hurt to try different things. I've been actually slowly turning um, everything over to the uh, ultra black silicone. Here, I'll show you that. You pick this up at anywhere, any auto parts store. Uh, um, I got this one at Walmart. They all seem to be relatively priced equal but uh this is the ultra black i see they make an ultra gray now um which uh was listed having um vibration control or vibration resistance i think it was called i didn't see that on here but everything else seemed to be the same between the the gray and the black but uh you know the vibration um resistance is, is, is kind of interesting because you know these old engines especially when you start cranking them do vibrate a lot and you know they're solid lifters they're not hydraulic so that, that um plays in a factor too but uh um it seems to meet the temperature uh heavy duty oil applications i do like that um everybody knows these things always leave their mark they always seem to leak, leak a little bit of oil um an ideal for domestic vehicles <laughs> actually the uh, ultra gray said domestic and imports well <laughs> I think these are considered an import. I don't even know <laughs> this thing's been in the United States probably for 50 years. But, um, oh, sensor safe. Uh, we use a lot of sensors on these. But in, anyways, um, I do really like this product. Uh, the other thing um, you got to check for is they got these, these seals. i um, going to case half here. These case half bolts. Um, figure out how to do this. <laughs> Holding the camera. But uh, it's always nice to put a little bit of oil on there. Just a little lube on each one, and rub it in. This helps them uh, find their find their way home. They got to fit into these these little grooves in here. Show these little grooves in here, but they got got to fit in those little grooves. Uh, the case halves got them on both sides. You can see them a little better here. But it's, uh, the, the oil, like I said, just kind of helps them slide in the, where they need to go. Now, if you're running a, uh, I think they call it a uh, 
a sleeved case. You won't be able to use these. Sleeved or penned, penned or sleeved. It's one of the tricks they do, uh, shuffle penning and sleeving. Uh, it's supposed to help uh, keep the engine case from walking a little bit. I've only, all the engines I've done, I've only done that to one, and that's because the, uh, the guy that wanted the engine built, that's what he wanted. I've never personally done one myself. Yeah, they just slide them right on down into the, their hole. Might have been easier to do this before the crank was in. Now, when you're taking a case apart, <laughs> don't forget to remove these before you have a case line board. Hopefully, your uh, machinist will recognize the fact that they're in there and remove them for you. All right, well, there's, there's that. Um, here's another product. You can use uh, thinner. I just happen to have a case of acetone here. Uh, actually got it from a garage sale for $1. <laughs> Stuff's like, so I think, 6 to $8 if you wanted to buy it new. Um, so when I was at the garage sale and seen that, I snagged it up. But uh, I've already done this. Um, but what I like to do is go around the, the engine. I'll probably do it again just to make sure this is all clean. Um, but... Uh, all these sealing surfaces, just to make sure there's no oil on there. Um, just get yourself a clean cloth and uh, put a little acetone or thinner on there and go around both case halves. Like I said, uh, use the Ultra Black. I'm going to see if I can get any more out of this. But when they sit, they dry up, and this one's old. Um, here's another product. This is what I use to seal the case halves up. It's a 1194 um, liquid gasket. It's a... Uh, Semi-drying liquid gasket. Uh, it's designed for uh, putting two-stroke engines or I mean, well, I should say motorcycle quad engines together. It's a product uh, by Three Bond. Um, it's kind of the same as what they used to call uh, a Yama Bond, but uh, years ago um, they kind of discontinued the Yama Bond. Um, so this was the next best thing. It's just like it. It's great. It's really smooth and uh, easy to work with and it's semi-drying. Um, I've used this for several years with good luck and I really like the product. Um, last time I was over at one of the uh, mo motorcycle shops in town I think they said that Yama Bond was now available again. Uh, I didn't need any at the time so I didn't buy it so I don't really know for sure or not but uh, if not this 1194 is a good uh, candidate if you can't find Yama Bond. Um, I think the difference between this and that that this was a Chinese made. I think it's, oh, wait a minute this is made in Thailand. <laughs> I should look before I speak. Um, yep, made in Thailand. So uh, I'm not quite sure where uh, um, Yamabon was made, but it's distributed by a Three Bond International Company of West Chester, Ohio, but made in Thailand. That's about all we're going to need for the cam plug. Come in here and just stick just a little. That's all it takes, just a little bit. Carefully put it in here. It's a little trickier because the cam's in the way. And the other thing I like to do, let's turn this around in a light where you can see it. But uh, see, I got my uh, lifter clips here. But uh, back side of these washers, it's nice to add a little bit of uh, extra sealant. Washer set on top of here, and this creates an extra little sealer surface for them. I'll do where then. Little small ones go to. It's actually a little paper gasket. Sometimes I put them on there, sometimes I don't. And so I think I got put them out here someplace. I'll probably put them on. Now that we got silicone going, <laughs> this is a timed event. Turn this back around. Now with this Yamabon here, I'm going around, go around the uh, case halves. I've had this tube for quite a while. It doesn't take much. We're only going to do one half case, or one case half. Don't need to do both. And you only really need to do the outside. Careful with the 
strings a little bit goes a long ways because you put too much on it's going to squeeze out in places you don't want it'll still kind of squeeze out even just putting it on this thin I may uh, put a little little thicker on down below not to worry too much about oil coming out up in the, these surfaces String, 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 go away. I've heard of a trick, uh, I've never tried it. But some people uh, have heard of using like uh, a strand of silk, a really thin strand of silk, and laid it in these, uh, on, in these, between these case halves here. Just one little strand supposed to help seal. I've never done it. And a friend of mine told me about it. I don't know if he ever tried it. Never confirmed it with him. Like I said, this is where all the, the oil sets. So if you're going to get it done real good someplace, it's down here. But the stuff will squeeze out. In there, in fact, uh, Oops, I get that, all right. <laughs> Thought maybe I forgot to put the silicone in the, the cam plug goes. But I did do that. I'm used to seeing the uh, used to seeing the orange silicone in there. Like I said there's no need to put it on these surfaces because those are going to be uh, inside and uh, they're going to be squeezed together really good. All right, lid. Double check we've got all the surfaces. And before I forget, let's put the cam plug in. And personally, I like to run the flat side in. And the guy I used to talk to, he said he liked it the other way in case the cam started rubbing on it it's not going to put a hole in it but you can see there's quite a gap in between the, the camshaft and the, and, the, and the cam plug um, if the uh, camshaft's rubbing on there you've got more problems double check everything again and let's go get the case half as we come back over here we're going to look and make sure we got all our cam bearings in and their center bearing in our lifters are in, those are important, and the uh, oil sump pickup is in. All right, and uh, this is where the lifter clips come in handy. Now it's just a matter of sending her home. Watch out for that rod. There you go. Now I'll grab my cloth here again and Kind of wipe the silicone up. We're going to actually stick a little bit of lubricant on there. All right, case half washers. There should be six of them. Hmm, that one's a little goofy. Betcha that's a, maybe for a head stud, an oddball. Good thing I got extras. And we got four of these little gaskets. Yep, there's four there. Put these here. And then those will take a for spring washers, or I always call them wave washers. And 
And then we got a new locking nut set. Nylon lockers are always nice. Oh, we'll come back here. I'll grab another one. Okay. Now, like I said, I like to lube these guys just a little bit. Just for torquing purposes. And now, time to get the handy dandy torque wrench. And uh, if you wrote your torque specs down, um, that's what we're gonna head for. But first, I torque twice. So I'll start at 15 foot pounds. First we'll just kinda hand tighten everything. So if you wanna consider that a thir third torque. I'll be doing this three times. This will slowly uh, bring the case half together. Like I stated before in other videos, I just kind of do a cross hatch pattern. Cross hatch. That'd be a. <laughs> I'm thinking of a porting heads, a cross pattern. Okay, now that the uh, case halves are kind of together, we'll make our check here, make sure everything rotates good, and then we'll start torquing. There's one. All right, now for the final torque. And then we'll get to going around on the uh, 13 millimeters. Hey ho! All right, one more just to check. All right, now on to the little ones. Um, first thing I usually do is grab a, I've got three of these case half bolts. And I like to put a spring washer on both sides. So this will require a 13 millimeter wrench as well as your torque wrench. As you can see, these are, uh, there's one that's a different size than the other two. These two go on the bottom, this one goes on the top. So we'll get that one in its home spot. Then, 13 millimeter, readjust torque wrench to anywhere for 15 to 18 foot pounds. You 
usually go, uh, I like to go 18. There, and we'll get these ones that we could have probably done these first, but these are the cam bolt ones. All right, now for the rest of them. All right, one thing to remember is underneath here, there's a stud that faces the opposite way. That's uh, the one that you're, if you're running a single carb or a stock carb, that your uh, intake manifold would bolt to. Usually you kind of start with that one first, just because it's kind of a nuisance that it's upside down. And it's most typically a longer bolt too. It's usually how you can tell if a uh, single port or a dual port, because I don't think the single ports utilize this case half, so they were a shorter stud. It's a dual port intake manifold. I believe that's the one that tightens down on this. And yeah, remember I dropped that one down there. All right, last two. One of the things you kind of got to be aware of, like I said, I'm torquing these down to 18 foot-pounds. I had a case back in the day that was a little softer. And it was actually starting to pull the these little studs right out of the case. And so you may have to back it down, and I think it would work at 15, but it didn't like 18. All right, double check, make sure everything's all torqued down. Looks good. But uh, one last step here. Now we got the case half uh, all torqued down. Um, so actually, uh, you can see, um, like in these oil pump area, or the uh, silicone squeezed out we're just going to wipe it down so it doesn't dry like that then uh same back here kind of main seal is going to have to go in and get that wiped down before it cures too and oh yep it's probably not too much on the oil pump on the inside as it is to where it's got a seal here Stuff's already starting to set up. Probably got to do that same thing on the oil pump here, too. Got a sealing surface. Get that cleaned off. And the short block is together. Flipper over. Make a rotation. Don't need the uh, lifter clips anymore. I'll take those out. All right, everybody. Uh, Short block is together, dirt, dirt, grease pit. Um, it's in the first stage of assembly. Uh, next will be the long block, and then we'll deal with things like the oil pump and the, uh, ex the extra oil sump on the bottom. Uh, and we can't forget to put a main seal in. Um, main seal, uh, I'll probably do a video on that because I've got the installation tool. 
It's kind of neat to see some of the tools at work. Um, you don't really need an installation tool, but it does help out a lot. But uh, until next time, uh, keep the flat side down and the shiny side up. See ya.